Now, U.S. media say Russia has given the FBI a tape of an intercepted phone conversation between one of the alleged Boston bombers and his mother. The recording was made back in 2011 and reportedly contains vague references to jihad. At the time, Russian authorities notified the U.S. that it was concerned over one of the suspect's extremist views. RT's Ganesh Jikan reports now on why Moscow's warning failed to prevent the tragedy. In the wake of the Boston bombings, it's the FBI now, bombarded with questions, how could they let the alleged Boston bomber Tamer Lantarnayev go off the radar after they'd been warned about him multiple times over the last two years? Russia warned not only the FBI about Tamerlan Sarnayev. Did they drop the ball? The FBI uh, dropped the ball here. There's no question about it. They dropped the ball here. There's no doubt about it. If he was on the radar and they let him go, he's on the Russians' radar. And why wasn't a, a flag put on him? Were the Russians right? And did the United States ignore their warnings, disrespect them? Repeated warnings. Tamerlan Sarnayev's own YouTube page full of radical content. Friends driving a car with a license plate that reads Terrorista number one. All of this was missed. It's possible that they were too bound by some preconception of who would be a possible jihadi that they were not able to see something in front of them. Maybe they were thinking, well, if these guys are Chechen, you right. know, they hate the Russians, they right. don't hate us. Politics may have been the reason why U.S. authorities failed to connect the dots on Tamerlan Sarnayev. Another possibility is, is that poor relations between Moscow and Washington uh, devalued the Russian report. Something that the Russian president says has to be fixed. If we truly undertake a joint effort, we will not suffer these blows and take such losses. It's even more possible that U.S. authorities politicized the intelligence, given the fact that Russia's concerns had been ignored before. Ilyas Akhmadov, the right hand of the internationally recognized Chechen terrorist Shamil Basayev, was given asylum and now lives in Boston. Ahmed Zakhaev, who Russians accuse of heinous crimes against innocent people, is still seen in the U.S. as a Chechen freedom fighter. The odd part of this, if, if anything, we've been, I'm not going to say sympathetic with them, but we've certainly been critical of Putin and how far he's gone in dealing with Chechen. So if anything, they, should, <laughs> they shouldn't have this anger at, at the United States. Many ask whether Tamerlan may have learned about bomb making on his trip to Russia. But the answer could be much closer to home. According to a senior government official, quote, they got their instructions on how to make bombs from the Internet. It is newsworthy to know that nobody has to travel anywhere or get any specific in-person training from some expert somewhere in order to access instructions for making explosives. When Johar Tsarnaev woke up this week, he reportedly told the authorities that he and his brother were motivated by a desire to defend Islam because of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Many terrorists have tried to politicize their heinous acts, but that doesn't change the fact that they're heartless killers. But when federal authorities look at an intel on a potential extremist from a more political rather than purely law enforcement point of view, that could be a recipe for future disasters. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekhan.